Well, it's another beautiful day on the Emerald Isle. Good morning. It's day 40. 40 is significant because I'm actually hiking 40 days and I'll have been taking six rest days for a total of 46 days on the Ireland Way. Wednesday, June 20th, and it's also a really special day because my spouse, my husband Gord, is currently on his way to meet me. We have a plan um, that involves meeting Gord in Castle Rock in a couple of days. So he'll fly into Dublin today and uh, train it up to Belfast, pick up a bicycle, take a train to Castle Rock, and then cycle alongside, or at least parallel me when I'm on the trail, he'll be on the road. And we get to stay in B&Bs every night from Friday to the end, to next Wednesday. Yeah, one week to the end. So I'm leaving Dungiven. Thank you so much to Super Trail Angel, Pat Convery, who has really earned his Trail Angel wings over the last couple of days. At the end of the day yesterday, I was really beaten up and soaked and uh, my spirit was kind of broken. So I called Pat for a pickup and all I really needed was a lift to where I could camp for the night because the rain was subsiding for the evening. But he took one look at me and insisted I went to back to the same B&B and he took me out there. So thank you, Pat, for caring for me like you would for any friend or family of your own. I've been a lot more sensible today in that I downloaded very detailed directions and that's what I uh, copied, emailed to myself. So even if I lose signal, I will be able to read those directions. And hopefully there won't be a thunderstorm and hopefully everything works out. It always does. Holy, this is one steep road. This is Tish from Dungiven, and she's superwoman because she walks this hill all the time. Tish, Tish, what's the secret to getting up and down this hill so frequently as you, you know, do? I'm rare here, I just, yeah. it's on my blood. Yeah, and what's your advice for getting middle-aged women out and active? Just give it a go. Yeah. Try, every day, just try a wee yeah, bit further. Yeah, a wee, wee bit, bit that's right. It doesn't have to be a whole mountain, does it? No. No. You live in a beautiful area of the world. I know. Very blessed. <laughs> that's the end of the road, literally. And it goes onto a gravel track and a clear Ulster Way International Appalachian Trail sign. And another one as soon as you go over the road, right? There, you see that? Is that so difficult? <laughs> let's see if it continues. Now, let's look back one last time to the Sparren Mountains. I came over those mountains and I enjoyed almost every minute of it. Except, honestly, I did, except yesterday when I was really frightened, when I was lost, and, and it was uh, treacherous. That was difficult. But yeah, I came over there yesterday and walked into uh, Dungiven. So, I just wanted to share with, with those who are watching who are hikers, um, it's nice that we can share little tips with each other. I've learned so much from watching other YouTube channel um, hikers who vlog their experiences and share tips and tricks. Something happened yesterday that I've never had happen before. So at the end of the day, I was very hungry and very tired and as you know, emotionally drained because I had my lost experience in the rough terrain and so on. And I was walking a 5K on a road. It, it was raining, not too hard, but hard enough that I still had full rain gear on. I had my cap on, my hood up, and so that kind of framed my face. I had no peripheral vision. I was looking downward so that the rain would drip off the beak of my cap as opposed to come into my face. And I started to drift off. I realized that as I was looking down, 
I'm just seeing puddle after puddle, footstep after footstep, not looking up when cars came, not checking the horizon for rising or falling. I just wanted to get to where I was going. And what happened is in my tiredness, my hunger, I guess I had a bit of lightheadedness, and I stumbled off to one side without tripping over anything, without a bump in the road. I just stumbled and I kind of snapped myself out of it. And out loud, I said, whoa, what was that? And I realized it was a dizzy spell because basically I had hypnotized myself. I had got into a trance-like state and my vision just kind of went, woo, like sort of a tunnel and uh, not a full blackout obviously but uh, definitely a sudden gray zone of mental awareness and it was after that stumble and whoa what was that that I decided I needed to call my friend Pat and uh, ask for assistance and uh, that's what I did. So just watch out for that. If you're on a long distance hike where there's a sort of monotonous terrain and you're just watching the ground and letting your mind drift and going on and on and on, um, if watch your blood sugar, watch your protein, watch your hydration levels. Yesterday I got into a bad state in general and I think all of that was sort of a perfect storm within my mind and body for this uh, dizzy spell, which was probably just, you know, a natural warning sign that I wasn't in good shape. And uh, I did stop and take some water, my snack pocket, which is right here, nice and, nice and full at the moment. <laughs> my snack pocket was empty. I had only one granola bar for snack yesterday and I had that around three o'clock and that was about six o'clock. And I'd been hiking since nine or something like that. So anyway, keep up your calories, your blood sugar, your protein, your hydration, stay awake. You find things getting a bit monotonous, you know, do times tables or run the alphabet, girls' names, boys' names, cities, and so on. Just uh, keep your brain occupied to stay on alert and you'll stay safe on the trail. Okay, this is where the off-roading begins for today. A very obvious trail, pressed down through the grass a way marker there, oh, about a hundred feet up ahead. And the last one was probably a hundred feet behind me. So, so far so good. And that's it. I'm across the bog. Was that so difficult? That wouldn't cost much money, time, effort at all to just hammer in a few signposts like that up on, uh, forget the name of it, where I was yesterday in the nightmare of lack of signage. And look at this lovely access into the forest. I don't know what the trail's gonna be like in here, but at least it's easy access. That's what an ascent and descent should be like. Two hours up and over and down, done. Signage is everything. That was uh, Bren Bada Mountain and uh, now heading to the B64 for just a short walk before I'm off main road again. You've no idea how happy the sight of this little insignia makes me. So, rain gear off. <laughs> There's where I came over this morning, right? Yeah, on the top of that crest and through the forest, down in that valley, along the bottom of this valley, and up to this road to where I am. Look at this, the Royal Mail. Here's the Royal Dermot. <laughs> and what were you telling me about dogs, Dermot? Don't trust the Jack Russell. No? Yeah. Isn't that funny? You're just okay. Go ahead. Really? You've had a bad experience? Among others, but mostly uh, Jack Russell. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've had so many dogs barking at me. I'm amazed that no, not one has come out to bite. So that's good. I wish you all the very best. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for the water, Dermot. Mm -hmm. This time even put the rain pants on in advance.
see that and that. This is so cool. You know why? These are remnants of lime kilns. Yeah, just like the ones we have near home on Georgian Bay and dotted all over Ontario, actually. And uh, it's so amazing that the same technology of the day was used to uh, burn down limestone to be used in construction of uh, stone houses, whitewashing, and so on. Fascinating. Oh, I think I'm about to be hit by another wave. <laughs> That's okay. Wing gear is still in effect. <laughs> Went in circles there for about a half an hour. The trail comes up, it says follow the fence line, but you can't see the fence because of the overgrowth. And the next signpost was on the ground, so I had no idea which way it was pointing until I talked to it and I said, well, you may not have necessarily fallen in the right direction. So I looked in the opposite direction and up the hill and could just see the top of a signpost. And there's another one and we are going straight up, which is no problem, as long as it's the right way. Yep, that's the trail. And this is how I'm doing it. 10 steps at a time. One, two, three, and nine, and 10. And I'm doing that so that I'm stopping at regular intervals to check that I'm not going off course and to make sure I don't get overheated because I got full rain gear on. <sighs> keep my heart rate under control and keep my head under control. So I won't panic because I know I'm on course. I don't care, well not I don't care, but it's not a big concern to me how hard the trail gets. Look at that, the backdrop, it's just boring. Um, that's not as great a concern as getting lost in rough terrain is. I, I really don't like that feeling. Ring Ford alert. See? Very cool. Yep, good spot. Overlooks the valley. Well, this is actually very exciting. It's tough. And as the book says, it is the toughest part of the trail. The last marker was over that ridge. All you get is an arrow pointing up. There's the next marker, and look where the next one is. <laughs> oh, we up high. But it's okay, because I can see it, and I know I'm on the right track. I, I just can't tell you how reassuring that is <laughs> after yesterday. I'm actually kind of proud of myself. Haven't finished it yet. But I am proud of myself for sticking with this, not giving up. I did go in circles for a while, about halfway up, but I found the correct course. And I'm continuing on. I'm almost done. Just me, climbing a mountain. Whoo, I'm at the summit of Donald's Hill. That was, it was tough, but, but it's doable. You just gotta stick with it. There's the coast. Castle, Castle Rock is somewhere down on that coast. And that's where I'm supposed to be meeting Gord the day after tomorrow. I'd really like to surprise him tomorrow because he gets in late tomorrow. And I'd love to be there when he gets there. I don't know that I can do the distance between because it's almost time to set up camp today and then I'd have to do I don't know about 38 tomorrow wow what an accomplished feeling um yeah it's rough up here but at least it's signed it's signed sign posted and once you find those signposts you're golden My feet are just floating inside. It's uh, 
one thing about waterproof shoes is uh, once the water gets in, it can't get out. And today was a day that just couldn't be avoided. I mean, I was in, once you're in bog on a rainy day, you're screwed. <laughs> it's going to be wet. This is a well-maintained area. There's one of the little markers right there. And uh, see, it doesn't take much. Just a stake in the ground, visible. And uh, so somebody needs to go and take care of the area, uh, the mountain before the one today that goes, uh, the one that you go over before you go into Dutton, given. It's in bad. Yeah, my feet were floating. Time to wring out my socks and put them back in there. <laughs> put my feet back in there for the last couple hours of the day. Well, at least getting some of the water out will be a help. The idea is to cross this bog covered in grass and heather to the wind farm road over there. No problem, I can see where I'm going. It says there are no way markers. Be careful. <laughs> just... Alrighty then. So I just wanted to show you something. Remember I had a, a sink into a bog trench? So here, relatively solid ground. There, relatively solid ground. In between, that goes down about 12 inches. Up, up, down. And if you happen to step into that void the wrong way, yeah, that could be a problem. So I'll be crossing this very slowly and carefully and probably not make the mileage that I wanted to today, but I'll get there safely eventually. Okay, another suggestion for the suggestion box. If you're going to send people on a route through a bog, cut a route. Just like a two foot wide, three foot wide, route down to the limestone and it'd be done. It'd be permanent. I I've fallen. I've lost my footing. I've twisted my ankles. I can't believe I haven't broken a leg or an ankle. Coming across the bog, there were no markers. And then I saw one way up on the crest and I went up and down and up and down and in holes and into trenches and made my way to the marker at the top and then was able to see the next one. But I could not see that marker when I entered the bog, uh, what do you call it, field. I'm sorry, just saying to people, be careful. This is the toughest part of the trail. That's not good enough. Safety first, safety first.